So, so Ramadan is an opportunity of a lifetime. It's like no other time in the year. This is the, the height of, I would say, the opportunity to earn good and score credit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just considering Ramadan, you can see how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has Allah has maximized the potential for every human being to advance spiritually, to do more good deeds and earn multiple rewards. And in a sense, as the Quran says, that our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be likened to a business transaction. I would say a business relationship rather than a singular transaction. So it's a business relationship and with relationship, uh, with a business, long-term business relationship, there is, there's always the potential for continuous growth, strategic growth. And there, there are seasons, there are times when there's a wave and you need to ride that wave to maximize your benefit and achieve, uh, I would say, uh, growth, optimal growth. And uh, the best actors in the market are the ones who know how to read the market, how to anticipate, and how to seize the opportunities. These are the ones who ride these waves um, in a timely way. The same thing applies to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is just the it's it's the it's the it's the golden opportunity to uh, improve our standing strategically with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increasing and maximizing our chances for saving ourselves from the hellfire and uh, guaranteeing I won't say guaranteeing, but again, maxim maximizing our chances of entering paradise, of earning more rewards with Allah, of growing spiritually, of adv advancing personally. All of this um, should be the focus of every Muslim, of everyone who wants to save, the, who, everyone who wants to save themselves from the hellfire, salvation. And um, so missing out on Ramadan is not an option for someone who takes their relationship with Allah seriously, someone who takes their life seriously. It's just not an option. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith where the companions mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ before uh, climbing his minbar, his pulpit, to make the khutbah for Friday, he said three times, Ameen, 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 which means, Oh Allah, answer our dua. The companions didn't know what the Prophet was doing, so they asked him later on, what, you, you know, for the first time we noticed you said, I mean, three times as you were mounting your member. And he said, Jibreel came to me and he made three pieces of dua. And, I, and he's, he told me to say, I mean. And I said, I mean, one of those three dua that Jibreel made was, Man adraka Ramadana wa lam yughfar lahu fabu'dan lahu. A person who lives to witness the month of Ramadan and they don't get their sins forgiven, may this person be distanced from the mercy of Allah. I mean, you can't be more deprived than that. It, it, like the bar is brought down so low that everyone can grab it. Everyone can reach it. Everyone can get their sins forgiven. It's so easy that if you miss out on this opportunity, that means you're not motivated at all. You don't know what you're doing. It's just like having, again, someone who gets into the, into the market, some kind of a new business gets into the market, and the bar is so low, you can make a lot of profit. You can secure, a, I would say, a portion or a segment of the market, and it might be some kind of a, a guaranteed portion that if you get it now, like the early you know, players in a market usually get a, a huge chunk of it, and if they play the game well, they can actually guarantee, you know, their share in the market for a long period of time, for a sustainable period of time. And this is what Ramadan really is for everyone. The, 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 the bar is so low that you can get your share, get, get your fair share of the market, of the, of the profit, and then you can sustain that. And if you haven't utilized this opportunity, you're not serious.
you're not a good player at all. You're not here to do business. You're just wasting your time and someone else's time. So Ramadan is something, is, is an opportunity just like that. And if someone fails to appreciate it, then they haven't done their homework in terms of taking their life seriously, taking their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seriously, and um, trying to detect opportunities and work for their akhirah. So in a sense, Ramadan comes as one month in the year where we have a lot of opportunities. And the, the good thing about this is that there are so many things we can do in Ramadan. There's a huge variety that there is something for everyone. There is reading the Qur'an. And Ramadan is called the month of the Qur'an because it was revealed first in Ramadan. So you have just reading the Qur'an, as simple as that. You have the prayers, the obligatory prayers. And then you have more optional prayers the 12 rak'ah of sunnah that we are supposed to offer every day. And then on top of that, we have the night prayer. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards immensely for. And Ramadan is characterized for qiyam al-layl, for praying at night. And then we have random dhikr, open dhikr, just remembering Allah, saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Then we have Sadaqah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwad al-nas wa kana ajwad, ajwad ma yakunu fi Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu was the most generous of all people. And he was the most generous in Ramadan. So then you have the primary act of worship in Ramadan and that's fasting. And it's an obligation. No one has an option as to skip fasting or the fasting of Ramadan unless they have a valid excuse. So all of this variety of the acts of worship are available and to your liking because some people are more motivated, naturally motivated to pray. They find their heart in it, they find this sweetness. Some people just enjoy reciting the Quran more than the prayer, more than dhikr. Some people find fasting very rewarding. Some people like the concept of focusing and khushu' in the prayer. So everyone has you know, their share. Ramadan has something to offer for everyone. And uh, it's actually an advisable thing for, for people to recognize where is their sweet spot when it comes to worship and to channel their attention and their energy there primarily. Because let's say, and this is an advice that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, gave to someone because he was asked, Someone asked him and he said, I have a lot of time on my hand, especially at night. Which is better for me to engage in Qiyam al-Layl, praying at night, or reciting Quran, or just do dhikr, open dhikr? Ibn Taymiyyah said there's, there's an ideal answer because comparing these three acts of worship in an, in a, in an abstract sense, praying at night has the highest reward because it includes dhikr, remembering, uh, Allah and reciting Quran and it's an act of direct engagement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're conversing with Allah then second comes reciting the Quran because these are the words of Allah and it's also a form of dhikr and third comes dhikr but all of them you know have their own each one of them has its own merit but he said then you have to look at yourself if you are someone who enjoys reciting Qur'an and thus you find it very sweet and rewarding and this means you're going to do more of it then in your case it will be your priority this, this is what you should be you know channeling your attention in but if you are someone who enjoys more and finds uh, remembering Allah a very sweet experience then that should be your, op the, the, your, your go-to option engage in open remembrance of Allah because that's going to draw you into the action and it's going to mean that you are going to sustain it, do more of it and strategically thinking uh, you're going to get, you're going to maximize your opportunity for rewards but if you engage in something and it's more like a chore for you, you, you can only do so much then you will feel bored, then you will give up on it 
So we have to be wise as to what we engage in. So and Ramadan offers this variety and it's important for us again to recognize our sweet spots and to maximize them. And there is something very interesting that emerges out of this strategy. And that, that is, let's say you enjoy random dhikr more. You just en enjoy saying Astaghfirullah. Somehow it resonates with you, draws you in. You're saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. The more you engage in it, it takes you deeper and it takes you into an area that starts feeding into Qur'an itself. So all of a sudden it will take you to the Qur'an through the back door. Then you will, you, you, start, to, you start to grow spiritually where you will enjoy the Qur'an more now. And then if you do that more, then it will open a new door for you where you will start enjoying the dhikr more. Some people struggle with fasting. And I would say keep doing it because it's an obligation in Ramadan. But Utilize your sweet spots, whether it's reciting Qur'an or maybe sadaqah, you do sadaqah. The more, you do, uh, you mo the more sadaqah you do with the right intention, you'll be surprised how as you spiritually grow, your spiritual presence starts to reach closer to the door of fasting, to a point where you will actually start enjoying it. So your relationship with the acts of worship is never static. It's a very dynamic, organic one. And any kind of growth is going to bleed into, I would say, the other areas. And um, it's, once you start building more momentum, it's just, there's no limit to how, how, how much growth you can achieve. And every spiritual growth comes with a lot of sweetness, a lot of grounding in reality, a lot of meaning, you know, in your life and a lot of personal maturity and I say Ramadan, there's no better time than Ramadan so no one should miss out on the opportunity of Ramadan um, one advice that I think is very important for Ramadan is to focus on quality rather than quantity many people, it seems like they have like a, a checklist of things they want to do I want to pray 20 rakah of taraweeh I don't fast every day. I want to read the juice every day. And it becomes, these, these markers become an end in themselves. And that's not a wise thing. Because these are just indicators. And indicators are just indicators. They're not the real thing. But they might be a helpful marker. The reality is, when you engage with the Quran, even if you read one page, as Abdullah ibn Umar anhum has said, if you read, oh, even uh, Abdullah ibn Ibn Mas'ud he said, if you read one page or one verse of the Qur'an with so much contemplation and understanding, it's way better than reading the whole Qur'an just going through it. And that's what Allah rewards for. People think Allah rewards for, although Allah rewards for the letters that you read, but Allah rewards more for the quality. So the, the, the reward the Prophet ﷺ promised for reciting the Qur'an, for example, it's conditional on the quality of your experience. So if you're just going through the words without any kind of reflection, you are beating the very purpose of the revelation of the Qur'an. Allah says in Surah Sad, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ That a book, a blessed book that we sent down unto you, O Muhammad, so that they contemplate its verses. That's why the Qur'an was revealed. That's how the Qur'an does its work. Uh, on the human, on human nature. This is how it, it brings it, brings the seed of human nature into growth and fruition, ultimately. So if you are just limiting or reducing the experience with the Qur'an to the mere verbalization of the words, to the detriment of its meanings and to the spiritual experience, you're not getting the reward the Prophet ﷺ promised because that's not what the Prophet ﷺ said when you read the Qur'an, you get this and that. Because you're not reading the Qur'an as the Prophet ﷺ meant it to be. So quality is important. The same thing with the number of rakahs. The same thing with the, the discomfort that comes with abstaining from food and drink for, all, for, for a long day. It's, it's not the hunger and the thirst per se that gets you the reward. But it's your ability to handle them for the sake of Allah and your ability to achieve and experience spiritual growth that comes with 
taking attention from your physical being and allowing it to flow more into your spiritual being. So this kind of focus on quality rather than quantity is extremely important. Because if you look at the hypocrites, they ticked all the boxes when it came to external actions. But the quality in the heart was not there. And that's the difference. That's the essential difference between believers and hypocrites. And hypocrisy is worse than disbelief. Because it is not only disbelief, but also a big lie where they pretend to be believers. So quality with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trumps quantity big time. We have one of the greatest of At-Tabi'een, Abu Ghilaba, rahimahullah. He said to some of the companions that he witnessed in his life, he said, Wallahi ma sabaqakum Abu Bakrin bi kathrati siyamin wa nasala walakin bi shayin wa qarra fi qalbihi. He said, Abu Bakr did not come first ahead of all of you, or companions of the Prophet Sallallahu because he prayed more than others, because he fasted more than others, but because of something that was in his heart. That's the quality of the act of worship. So when we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should give precedence to quality. Then when you secure quality, then quantity starts to count. But before you lock in quality, you cannot depend on quantity. It becomes meaningless. So that's a very important point to keep in mind as we are dealing with, um, with Ramadan. Another important another Another important point when it comes to Ramadan is paying attention to the heart. The heart is where Allah looks and Allah judges humans primarily based on their heart. Somebody might think, but what about actions? Well, if you get your heart right, then the actions will follow. But if you focus on the actions and you neglect the heart, you're just performing. You're not doing the real thing. So when we talk about the heart or when we invite people to focus on the heart, automatically and organically, the work of the heart is going to express itself through the external actions. So we're talking about the whole context. But that separation between actions of the heart and actions of the limbs is not a natural one. It's just in the mind. So, as we engage in fasting, in reciting the Qur'an, remembering Allah, giving sadaqah, when we engage in any act of nearness, even if it's kindness to people, even if it's forgiveness towards the mistakes of others, even if it's a piece of advice we offer others, or maybe just an act of teaching. Any act that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we engage in it, we should be focusing on where it's coming from. What is our inner experience? That's what it means to focus on the heart. What is our inner experience? Are we doing that for the sake of Allah? Is our heart, do we feel motivated that we are doing this out of us experiencing the love of Allah, gratitude to Allah? And are we feeling drawn to Allah? And do we see this act as a channel to express that love that we have of Allah in our hearts? That's what sincerity really boils down to. Many people think about sincerity as a thought. Yeah, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. This is a thought. Muslim scholars spoke about this. Uh, Imam al-Ghazali specifically, he warned against this. And he said, this is hadith on nafs. He says, when you say, oh, I'm going to pray for rak'ah for Allah, you say to yourself, he says, this is a thought, hadith on nafs. This is just an inner dialogue you're having. Intention comes from a deeper dimension. And what intention means is that you're doing things for Allah. What does this mean? It's not a thought you entertain. The reality of intention is that, because intention and motivation in a sense are synonymous. So what is your motivation? What is driving you to perform this action? What is the value in this action that prompts you to engage, 
to do. And the primary motivation in human behavior is love. So sincerity boils down to you living in a state of love of Allah and then this love naturally seeks expression through human nature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered us the channels, the engagements through which we can express this love. And when we express this love through charity, through prayer, through recitation of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is the type of actions that Allah wants from us. Then we are focusing on our hearts. We're coming from our depth. We're not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lowest quality of actions. We're, going, we're giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our totality, our essence, who we really are. We're offering ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this sense. And I think this is what helps people really benefit in Ramadan. With most of us, this happens unconsciously and accidentally. So it's not the constant experience in Ramadan, but just being aware of this, I think can make you know, a whole difference in our experience of Ramadan. Yeah, so these are the pieces of advice I can think of when it comes to utilizing Ramadan.